everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, uh, General Conference, Mormon General Conference, the Conference of the General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, <laughs> is uh, going to be happening basically as this episode is dropping. Yeah. Uh, so we want to announce that Dan... We'll be at Temple Square live tweeting yeah. during I'm gonna, General Conference. I'm going to learn how to tweet, you guys. <laughs> I'm going uh, to be I'm going to be the TGIA on the spot correspondent. Yes, indeed. Uh, if you uh, General Conference sessions are Saturday and Sundays, I won't be doing both days. Uh, I, I don't have the patience for that. Which day do you want to do? I'm going to do Saturday. You're going to do Saturday. Yeah. And there's a 10 a.m. session and a 2 p.m. session. Uh huh. Which one of those do you think you'll be hitting? Both? Hang out? Do a little wander downtown between the two? We'll see. That's all Mountain Time. Tune into Twitter. Follow our handle, at TGI Atheist. Yeah. Um, but we'll but, talk We'll talk more about that later in the show and talk yeah. about what we're going to be, what, what, we, what we're expecting. Yeah, there's uh, some possible uh, revelations. The rumor mill is churning, <laughs> baby. Churning. Heavily celestial... Uh, correspondence, yeah. direct to Rusty Nelson. They are going to be... They're going to read it. They are going to be promoting, not just accepting, but promoting gay sex now, from now on. It's going to be live on stage. Yes, it is. At yes. the conference center. Every, every ward house in the country, in the world, will uh, will require two gay men to have sex on the altar. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, Dan, yeah, uh, I've got um, some news from Quebec. The the beautiful land of Quebec. Yes, the Canadian province. Yes, uh, of Quebec, the, um, which the call, Frank, francophone their, province. Yes. Yeah, which calls their uh, provincial uh, governing gov- governing body, their legislative uh-huh. body, the National Assembly. Yeah, these people they they don't <laughs> anyway. They uh they really like to be. To think of themselves as the only important uh, <laughs> part of Canada. Part of Canada. <laughs> well, nonetheless, um, the National Assembly uh, has had a large, apparently large, crucifix hanging in it. True. For uh, since uh, 1936, it's hung above the speaker's chair. Yeah. Um, well, this uh, last Thursday, uh, 103 members of the National Assembly. Uh, voted in favor of a motion to remove the crucifix. Uh, there were no abstentions. And anyone so it, vote against it? Uh, I do not believe so. Wow. Uh, this is this was... Uh, I mean, the article doesn't mention if somebody did. Uh, this article... I'm sorry, this vote uh, is part of a uh, compromise of sorts that uh, needed to happen yeah. because... Quebec, uh, the Quebec government has been trying to also outlaw religious uh, headwear oh, right. in particular um, for government employees. Right. No, they, a, a, of a certain level. We've talked. Um, yeah, we've talked about this before. We talked about how yeah. they, 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 they were going to try to outlaw basically any relig- outward religious shows. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, including necklaces and various yeah. and head and, scarfs and whatever and, and this has been controversial indeed it, 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 it is not something that is i'm just not sure a, i'm behind it i i find it an odd thing yeah but what is interesting is here's this government body and they're trying to get uh public employees to or ban public em- employees from wearing these you know religious symbols and right whatnot. uh well they had this big cross up. Right. And so people were calling them out on their hypocrisy, essentially. Right. And uh, and so they were like, fair enough. And so they're taking the thing down. There you go. Um, so here's a quote uh, from, I believe, uh, one of the, the lawmakers. Uh, we want to show um, all Quebecers that we are also ready to make compromises on, on, on this issue, on the crucifix, uh, in order to get as much support as possible. My goal is to unite Quebecers. So they see this like getting rid of outward signs of religiosity as a way to unite. Yeah. Rather than accepting pluralism, 
right? Because because again, the cross take that fucker down. Yeah. That's, that, that, no that matter what, be up on the wall. That needs to come down. Adornments in your halls, religious adornments in right. your halls are are, are wrong. They're but right? they're different from personal religious expression. Absolutely, because that's on the they're, that person's carrying it with them. Right. Right. They're not part of the the this this building that is the symbol right. essentially of your government. And right. I do think, I think, f- frankly, I feel like seeing different, it, I mean, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. Because what I think, what I imagine is if, if I went into a government building and I saw a Sikh man in a turban and a Muslim woman in a hijab and a, you know, a Jewish man with a kippah uh-huh. and all of these things, I would think, oh, good pluralism. Exactly. Yeah. However... If I walked into a courthouse in Kentucky and saw cross, 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 crucifix, 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 and no other representation, I would think, oh, shit, I'm not going to get a fair trial here. Oh, you mean people wearing them? Yeah. Okay. So I'm um, so so maybe it's right to just say, you know what, let's not, sh- ha- let's not let our employees have any show of this. Let's make sure that everyone feels equally treated. But what but then, do you do for the person, for the man, the Sikh man uh, in the yeah, turban? That's true. We, you can, I, I, yeah. It's not like you can say, nope, you can't wear the thing that's important to your religion. That's, yeah, I don't, I don't approve of it. I think, yeah. I, I, I mean, now a cross on a necklace is different because it's not required by and their that, religion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it could very easily be said to be required. You know what I mean? All they, all they have to do is to say, my pastor told us we have to. Right. And then suddenly, boom, how is it different from, you know, from a yarmulke or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't, th- I don't think that you should inhibit the personal. Now, I, I think you can say, no, you can't have Jesus loves me, this I know, you know, framed on your wall in your office. Right. But like a, you know, a small personal thing on your body i don't think you can i don't think i don't think you should prevent that Hmm. that's just where i'm at i don't know i'm I'm open to change my mind on that yeah i it's obviously complicated um i'm i'm one who says let the individual have the freedom yeah um if it's something that's sort of required and and let's embrace pluralism and, and let's 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 make these spaces um very welcoming right to employees of all backgrounds and to right. and to citizens of all backgrounds mm-hmm. absolutely yeah but having a building that says big giant know, cross a big giant cross having like something. jesus oh you know a big giant cross yeah. is literally and like the government endorsing a religion it's yeah it's not okay it's not unacceptable really bad um i'm going to take us to buffalo new york uh and just a little bit before that to uh san antonio texas where both uh, of these uh municipalities they both have fairly large airports and both airports have recently said we're not going to do it to chick-fil-a Oh, interesting. Are they protesting that stupid pickle? <laughs> because I have a problem with the pickle. Well, it's a stupid chicken sandwich with a pickle on it. It's nothing. <laughs> okay, your objections are noted. <laughs> so no, I will, I'm I will continue. I agree, with- I agree with them. I think that it's it's not. Well, I think you'll also agree with the real reason that they're not being okay with uh, Chick Fil A. Oh, okay, which of course is that Chick Fil A. Even so, Chick Fil A got in some hot water several years back mm-hmm. because uh, they, you know, they're it's a Christian owned company. It's owned by a very Christian family, right? Uh, and you know, they're not allowed. To, they don't open on Sundays, and they were giving a lot of money to Christian charities, many of which were very anti LGBTQ. Uh, and so there was a big to do about it, a big hubbub. Uh, a call for boycott, and then they said, "Nope, we're not doing it anymore. Don't worry about it. We're not giving to any to any anti LGBT uh, organizations anymore." Right? Okay, fair mm-hmm. enough. They lied. They lied. They were totally doing it. They were totally giving to 
a bunch Those of organizations fucking bastards so the organizations that they were that they used to be giving to were fighting marriage equality and stuff so that was overtly anti lgbt now they're giving the places that they're giving to are are organizations that are christian organizations that for instance don't allow like you have to some of them like you have to sign a thing that says that you won't engage in any gay behavior to work for them and stuff. So engage in gay behavior. It's they're, so they're not fighting a fight that's anti-LGBT. They just are anti-LGBT, and that's a wow. The, it's it's a distinction without a, much of a difference, right? Yeah. Um. So, so yes. Uh, recent. It has recently come to light that they're still doing this, right? And both of these airports have decided they're not going to have it. They were both going to have an, a, a Chick Fil A, and they then they said no. Would this Chick Fil A have been opened on Sunday? No, nope. it wouldn't really? have been. Well, so, that's reason enough. Well, what's interesting? It's an is airport for Christ's sake. A lot of people said they're just doing it as a financial decision because the because the airport would make more money with a uh, with a restaurant that was open seven days a week as opposed to six days a week. Sure. Turns out not to be that true because Chick-fil-A makes money hand over fist. uh, And they make more in six days than most restaurants make in seven. Oh, okay. Um, So it's not, it's not, you know, they're, they're not being, they're not making a financial decision and then just winking at the gay people about it. Right. This is actually a legit, like moral stand. And I like it. I like it when municipals municipalities uh, make the right choice. Well, very good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and again, I will say it. It's a lousy piece of chicken with one little slice of pickle. I got to say, I fucking love their chicken. <laughs> I don't go there anymore, but I mourn it a little bit because I... <laughs> fucking love their sandwiches i don't know how they do it but they are the most flavorful like <laughs> juicy bite of chicken oh it pisses me off that i can't go there stupid pickle on it that's cool. I, I i i i will say i do add lettuce and tomato i used to add lettuce and tomato was that an option yeah uh, well still <laughs> the default is a dumb piece of chicken with a pickle and i just i i come on Give a just try a little harder, <laughs> right? That's my main objection. Yeah, there you go. Uh, actually, no. Uh, great. I applaud these cities. Me too. Um, so Dan, I kind of want to take a little turn here. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Because I, I read an article uh, that isn't so much about a current event mm-hmm. uh, as it is about um, sort of an ish an issue, and uh, one activist's sort of take on. On, on the issue. Um, there's a, a woman by the name of uh, Masi Alinejad. Uh, she's Iranian. Okay. And she is one of... She, she's basically been, been one of the main people spearheading uh, this... Uh, the, the Iranian women's struggle against... The, by law being met, like required to wear hijabs right wearing headscarves right um she's and, she's not opposed to the wearing of them just the just the mandating of it the mandating is the issue i think personally oh. she doesn't want to wear one right uh but she doesn't feel like uh i mean you know if if i guess if a woman chooses to yeah. great whatever. but you can't make that choice unless it's a choice exactly right uh, so she uh, she's the founder of the White One Wednesdays movement. Mm. Are you familiar with this? Where no. uh, women on Wednesdays she encourages women to take off their their hijab. Uh-huh. Um, I think a white one, right? And uh, and then wave it around on, oh. out on the street. And there have been videos of like women. They'll put their hijab up on a stick and they'll stand on the street corner. And they'll wave their their hijab with an un, uncovered with head. An uncovered head. Oh, interesting! Right? And it's this this is protest, and I guess women have gotten in trouble for it. Yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's this ongoing thing. Well, she is making a stink about uh, Western visitors, okay. female visitors to Iran from Western nations, right? Uh, who would otherwise 
who, who who otherwise in their life always support the equality of women. Sure. Right? And she, she has some very specific ones that she calls out as examples. Who then come to Iran and put on a headscarf. And she says that this... Well, that but this, aren't they falling in line with the law? As foreign dignitaries, you can usually get away with shit. Oh, okay. Right? Sure. Um, now, I don't know. Iran maybe wouldn't let you in. Yeah, maybe. But... Mm-hmm. But once you're in there... But make the... If you have stand, especially right. if you have a, like diplomatic immunity of some sort, right? Exactly. Yeah, uh, take a stand and show solidarity toward Iranian women um, by just dressing how you normally dress, right? And and because she's saying that they're, in essence, showing up and putting on a hijab, uh, or or for example, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, she actually calls her out and mm. says, wearing the hijab as a sign of solidarity to our community. This is not this is not a required thing. Right. Maybe maybe in the mosque you right. have to, but just to like show up, you don't have to be wearing one. Right. Right. Um and 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 so you're you're basically sort of tacitly approving of the of the oppression of the women. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. You're 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 using this this symbol, this cultural there it's not just a cultural symbol. It's something that is used to oppress women. Yeah. Right. Um, and so she calls out this group, in particular, this one group of Swedish uh, politicians who showed up um, because this she had this Isabella Lovin had taken this very famous picture that had gone viral mm. of her with all of these cabinet members who were women signing a, she's signing a bill into law mm-hmm. and it's to kind of mock a very similar picture that had gone around with, of Donald Trump and he was surrounded by all men right and and they were just saying you know uh, Sweden in Sweden we believe in the equality of women and our mm-hmm. cabinet is filled with women right and uh and but yet when she went to to Iran there's her headscarf okay and she's like no people need to to take a stand on this issue. Now, this is the reason I bring this up is that it's been an issue that I've had a hard time kind of squaring, mm. right? Um, because from my perspective, you know, a, a woman in the United States walking down the street wearing a hijab, I, I, it, as long as she has come to make that decision on her own and uh, so forth and so on, I would say okay, I guess that's fine. And I want to always treat people equally. Yeah. Right. And so, um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to see that hijab and I, I want to be in a place where that hijab doesn't, um, make me treat that person any differently. Right. Right. Um, however, it is a sign, uh, it is a symbol of the oppression of women in Islam. Yeah. And so I'm uncomfortable with it as a thing. And I think that she uh, – I th- actually, I think she does reject the hijab. Not going back to your question earlier, I think she outright rejects it. Yeah. I think she rejects it as it is, it, it is emblematic of Islam's oppression of women. The unequal treatment of women in Islam, right? And the, the men have no requirement to wear something, right? Um, there's no equal thing right. for men, so this is obviously something that is used to keep women in in in, in sort of in line, right? And to well, yeah. to 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 dehumanize them, right? Well, right? it reduces women. I mean, I think that a lot of the idea is. That it's to prevent male gaze, uh-huh. and it reduces women essentially to a sex object. Exactly, and it puts all and of the responsibility for this male gaze on the women. On the women, as opposed to where it belongs, which is right. squarely in in on the men to right. stop being pervs. Right, but clearly that's not uh, uh, the case. Right, with a lot of Muslim men. Because they're extremely uncomfortable with the, you know, with, with the idea of un- the uncovered woman. Right. Right. Um, and uh, Grow up, Middle East. That's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm well, saying. Well, actually, a little bit, yeah, but not <laughs> more. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so it, it, I 
I feel like after reading this and reading of some of her comments, um, I think she might have uh, won me over on being anti hijab. Okay. As far as like, because you've gone back and forth on that. You you were no. You I mean you were never pro hijab, but you were always pro the right to wear a hijab if the woman wants. Yeah, I yeah I haven't vacillated too much on it. I don't think. I mean, I mean we've all just been sort of like, it's it's a tough question and one that is may not be ours to answer. You know what I mean? Um. Well, I'm not going to answer it for people right individual people right right and i'm not going to answer it for society but i i feel like if i'm going to align myself sort of in my mind Mm. with an ideology right i'd rather align myself with this woman right who is just who, who sees it for what it is right yeah and and say you know what I'm all about that position. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's not for us to answer, but if she makes a compelling argument, then it I'm... is for her to answer. Oh, absolutely. So, like, yeah, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm saying, Dan. That's all I'm saying. That's well, all Dan, we're saying. Dan, it's all I'm saying. Frank, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to take us uh, to the Vatican now, mm-hmm. uh, where Pope Francis has released a document known as an apostolic exhortation. Holy shit, that sounds important. It doesn't it just? Huh. Uh, it turns out to be as milk toast as you could possibly imagine, considering oh, no. that it is in reference to the recent uh, synod that was held by a whole bunch of bishops to try and discuss the, uh, the problem uh, of their um, sexually abusing minors, uh, of, of the priests sexually abusing minors. Uh, and a couple of big takeaways here from this. Now, the priests themselves, the, the the synod produced a document, and the final recommendations of these of that document were called very in in fairly strong terms on for uh, women to hold positions of responsibility and decision making in the church. Oh, they called oh, it. Yeah, they called it a duty of justice. Yes. Now, I think that's pretty strong language. Yeah. And I think it's a pretty bold, like, position to for the church to, to align themselves so with. So bold. Uh, the, the pope, are this very liberal, very progressive pope that yeah. we've got now. Yeah. Who always talks liberal and progressive, but then when it comes right down to it, he doesn't do anything. So he stopped very short of saying, yes, we're going to put women into positions of power. And instead said something more along the lines of uh, women uh, have, he said women have, quote, legitimate claims to seek more equality in the Catholic Church. Ew. So. Ew, that's nasty. It feels weird. Yeah. Uh, but that's, and that was the big headline uh, on the art, on one of the articles that I saw. It was about, you know, women have a legitimate claim. Isn't that cute? Look at them wanting equality. Right. For for justice and equality, but there was this other segment of his uh, of his text that I found way more disturbing. Um, I feel it's disturbing that I mean I I don't expect a look. These churches move at glacial pace, <laughs> so I didn't expect him to be like, "Ha ha! Here's the new church where women are in, are in charge or whatever." Like right. I knew that that wasn't going to happen. Uh, so, so that wasn't a big earth shaking thing for me, but as I'm reading, I was blown away by the other thing he said, which was, which got underplayed in a lot, in a lot of the press, which was that he was calling on young people uh-huh. to help police the, the priests who are, who, who might be molesting them. I beg your pardon. It was, it's the weirdest <laughs> fucking thing. What? It, basically. So. Uh, so you know he 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 said that the Pope called for uh, the eradication of practices that uh, that exercise authority in the church and allow you know allow the cases of of child molestation to be to be handled uh-huh. with quote irresponsibility and a lack of transparency. Okay, that sounds good. But then he said he urged then it, he he wanted young people. To call out priests that they thought might be at risk 
of molestation. Oh, no, no, no. And he, he basically said, he said that they should, quote, remind him of, a commit, of his commitment to God and, to, and his people. Oh, God. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, it's their responsibility. Like, they're supposed to just say, now, priest, now, Father Flanagan. You're not supposed to touch you me You know you're not supposed to do that. Remember your commitment to God? Right. Are you kidding me? It's their responsibility now? I I am livid about that. Yeah. And it and it got so underplayed in the in the press. I couldn't believe it. Like, just there's like, your headline. They're handing out rape whistles to the all the altar boys. Right. Like, what is this? Well, if nothing else, this shows a complete <laughs> lack of understanding of what the problem looks like. Yeah. Because these 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 children are groomed for this over yeah. the course of Absolutely. months or years. Yes. It's it's yes. not like the priest goes and grabs, right? You know, Johnny's Johnny by the crotch. And right. then Johnny goes, oh, you, you're, you're not supposed to do that. Right. It's a process. And it right. is. A, and and one at which the kid, you know, the kid's going to be baffled by it. This is an adult uh, who is an accomplished uh, predator. Right. The kid's not. You, you can't put anything on the shoulders of children. This It's insane. It is literally insane. And I think that this pope has just proven yeah. that he's worthless. This is a worthless fucking pope. And anyone who like who says, oh, he's so liberal. Oh, look what he's doing. He's done all this good. Right. What? Point me to it. You show me the good that he's done because I haven't seen it. Wow. I'm furious. Wow. This guy is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Hmm. I'm not okay with it. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe a phone app. <laughs> well, you've solved it now. Okay, I hadn't thought of that. Well, pitch it to the Vatican. Yeah, it like it actually guides you through uh, after every time that you have an encounter with your priest. So you're what, supposed to yeah. mark which one of the things he just did. Right. It's yeah. like a grooming identifier. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, and so that's gross. You send your kid if he, if you're going to send your kid to be an altar boy or uh -huh, to, yeah. to have any sort of individual dealings with the priest, right? Which you just say in this, which you're a fool if you do. Yeah, I mean, if you take your kid to a Catholic church, to any church, but to a right. Catholic church especially, and leave him alone with the priest, then then you know what's going on. <laughs> but at least get the app, right? Ugh, gross. Well, Dan. Yes? Uh, I have a story of uh, some other priests. I just want to point out exactly how much restraint I used by not coming up with, by not brainstorming names for that app. Because well, yeah, I that did. started to happen the in my brain. The first one I did, it was, was so bad that I yep. just walked away from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think no. both of us are. are... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to point out like three or four really. Uh, Horrifying things came into my mind. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to point out how much restraint we've shown. Mm -hmm. We are very, very good people, Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Well, a group of Catholic priests in Poland uh, have... Uh, they. <laughs> it took them a while. Took yeah. them a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> they just uh, realized... That there is magic in the Harry Potter book. <laughs> one of them finally read one. L literal and like, witchcraft. And they were like, wait, wait a <laughs> second. Hang on a tick. <laughs> and they've burned, burned <laughs> Harry Potter books. Oh, my God. Yeah, they are behind oh the times. Oh, boy. They, uh, uh, they kind of missed the moment. Yeah. They, they consider the books to be sacrilegious, of course, um, because you mentioned it. Magic and wizardry and uh, witches, uh, sorcery and what have you, witches. Yeah, uh, it, very, 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 uh, just incendiary, incendiary stuff. Yeah, uh, how dare, how dare they put these books in front of children? Right. You oh, know? it Holy is it, crap. It is an outrage. Yeah. Well, the way that we know about all of this is because um, a group. Uh, published 
pictures of the burning online, and I'm going to say the name, and I want you. I want it just to sink in. Okay. Okay. I'm prepping. Hang on. It is. Okay. Uh, it is the SMS from Heaven Foundation. <laughs> SMS meaning text, text message. Messages. Text messages from Heaven Foundation. I've been waiting. Foundation, for those. nonetheless. All right. Sure. Um, normally they uh, uh, do like you know Bible quotes and whatnot on their. Uh, it, it's it's all religious. They just you Christian su- messages via SMS. You you sit you sign, you up, sign up and up. they just send you a little mm-hmm. a little yeah. text. Hey, who knows? That is Maybe. not that is decidedly not from heaven. <laughs> they are being deceptive, and I will um, not have it. Yeah, there 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 were other things burned at this event: an elephant figurine. I don't know why. Um, a tribal mask was burned. <laughs> an elephant? Could that be like a Ganesh reference or what? Maybe. Wow. Maybe. Um, uh, Somebody see. just didn't like their their brother's toy. Yeah. Um, obviously. Uh, okay. So they're basing this on a passage from Acts, mm. um, and they quoted it in the in the post saying. Many of those who had practiced magic collected their books and burned them in front of everyone. So they calculated their value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. And then they posted another passage from Deuteronomy that says, burn the images of their gods. Don't desire the silver or the gold that is on them and take it for yourself or you will be trapped by it. That is detestable to the Lord your God. Oh my God! Yeah. Well, they they win, they win this round. Oh, Bur- books books burned. Burning yeah. those books, boy, uh, they sure did. Uh, they've they've got about five hundred million copies left to go. Yeah, exactly. That's how many the the, the <laughs> of the Harry Potter books apparently sold. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I, I ultimately like yeah, it is a story of like witchcraft and magic and this and that. Um, but it's all very seems all very sweet and innocent. I haven't read the books. I was a little too... I was, I, it was, it was we a were, generation after us. Yeah, we were a little old for it. After us. I, I mean, I know plenty of people in my generation who read the books. Yeah, I never really got into them. But, I saw the movies. Yeah, and it's it's ultimately... Like, Harry is good. Yeah. And he's fighting evil. Yeah. He's fighting ba- the bad character, right? Right. And who, who uses the magic for bad. And Harry uses magic... Like... Like this is this is ultimately a story of it's the triumph of good over evil. It is such right? it is such so a how, how a stand people... in for for any Bible story or whatever. Exactly. It's the same basic bullshit. Well, like like it's teaching. I, again, I'm I haven't read them, but there's friendship. Mm-hmm. There's probably values of like loyalty. I would guess Satan and... worship, <laughs> all the good things. <laughs> but. Like, like for, for people to freak out about this, who all they do is is have their own version of good versus evil, right? Like, no, no – oh, oh, this was actually really good. Uh, somebody posted online. They said, I have not met anyone yet who would rape, murder, or steal uh, in the name of Harry Potter. <laughs> In the name of the Bible, yes. <laughs> Bad news, gentlemen. And that's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking, right? Like, yeah. like this is just this sweet, innocent thing that kind of dabbles in some something that's kind of fun and spooky or whatever yeah. for kids. And uh Yeah, I just yeah, I want I wanna cares? I wanna see the moment when somebody's like, I stabbed you. That's for Hagrid. Take right. that. Right. <laughs> it's just it's 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 ludicrous. Yeah. Anyway. There you go. Well, uh, I'm going to close this off with some good news. Oh? Here in the land of Zion. Oh, yeah. And you know I mean Utah because I didn't say Zion. <laughs> right. Because here we say Zion. That's true. Uh, and and it is oft referred to as that by the believers of this, of this land, Utah. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, w- fucking's legal. What do you mean? We finally did it. We made have fucking we been legal. The law? Uh, you you definitely have been, if you've been fucking. Oh, okay. uh, because this it was this legislative session that finally ended laws against fornication hmm. and uh, and uh, what do they call it when 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 it's probably sodomy or sodomy? Something. Right? Yeah. They love sodomy. And, and, 
sodomy, fornication, and uh, uh, adultery were all against the law in Utah, technically. What about... Mostly like, unenforceable. Uh-huh. Uh, as, sure. per, as per other, you know, national cases have been decided that have rendered these worthless laws. They, they, right. they don't actually do anything, but they've been on the books. Right. So, uh, so... They got rid of them. They got rid of them. So now, yes, fornication is now... Unfortunately, because let me tell you something, not everyone's happy about this. Oh, no. Yeah. Some of our more conservative representatives, uh, (laughs) Representative Merrill Nelson of Grantsville, Utah, objected to it. Okay. uh, As did Representative Kevin Stratton of Orem, who, who said, quote, and believe me, I'm going to try and read this literally how he said it. So the mistakes are his, not mine. Okay. Uh, Representative Stratton said, what is legally is often far below what is morally right. Oh. And I recognize our laws are not strong enough to rule uh, immoral people. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Oh, God. What a ding dong. Uh, well, if he could, he would. He would enforce laws based on morality rather than... Based on his morality. Yeah. The point is, morality equals my morality. Well, sure. Morality yeah. doesn't equal... Like, there's no... So, yes, he's mourning he would, he how be... weak the law is. Because he would love to just be able to... Well, he would love that if this were, you know, a place like you're wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He wants, he wants to live... One religion in control... Basically, he wants to inter- in- institute Sharia law. He just doesn't know that that's what he wants to do. Right. He wants a theocracy, and uh, he thinks that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mormons love the idea of theocracy. Well, yeah. that's why they set one up. Yeah, that's why we have one here <laughs> in the beautiful state of Utah. So there you go. Uh, uh, go out there and don't worry about that six-month prison sentence and $1,000 fine that you might oh have been- Oh, my God been subject to uh as a per, class per uh incident per incident no voluntary sexual uh congress was uh, a class b misdemeanor holy cow until recently wow when was the last time they were enforced do you know uh Does it say? i did read about some i don't know when the last time was i definitely okay. read about something happening in the 90s though no way yeah Wow, that's fucked up. All right. So, yay, go enjoy your legal sex, everybody. In Utah. Uh, if you would like to write into us and tell us about your legal sex, please don't. Uh, you can write to podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message at the telephone number 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and click on that like button. And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Hey, what? Coach Dave. Coach Dave. Let me tell you something about Coach Dave. <laughs> Coach Dave is a treat. Uh, yeah. Whenever he crosses uh, our he, path, yeah. he is just a little a little nugget, a little morsel of crazy. It he, goes down nice. He was an acquired taste for me. Oh, really? Yeah. He's sort of a brand that, that, <laughs> that I don't really care for that much. <laughs> um, but... He his his the kind of crazy. You're right. It's like it's an acquired taste. It's it's mm, it's delicious once you like it's it. It's kind of like bitter chocolate. Yeah. Like eventually, once you sort of get it, once your taste buds yeah. are, like Absolutely. understand it, it's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So here he is. Uh, the the thing to remember about Coach Dave is that while he is a prophet, yes, right. Which is important. Very important. Uh, he is also uh, a rabid conspiracy theorist. Yeah. And he's he's and, married the two into one lovely little brand. Oh, yeah. You don't need, you don't need a separation between those two things. <laughs> you can just run with both of them. And so here he is. Uh, he's uh, talking about 
the the future of I guess the Trumps. Yeah. Uh, so let's listen. and the country. Uh, yeah, indeed. Who is the next Trump? I guess you mentioned that. Uh, is it Ivanka? You mentioned that Trump might not be the only pr- Trump president. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, the Lord's been telling me there's another one coming. There's another Trump coming. Mm-hmm. And so we, I don't know which one it is. However, mm-hmm. I will say this, and I'll release it here for the first time. I had a dream this morning. And in the dream, I saw Donald Trump Jr. And then it was just, it was just a real quick snippet of it. And it was just like, I knew there was an emphasis, an emphasis on Junior, and then I thought, "Huh, JFK Junior." I knew it had something to do with JFK Junior. Now, does it have anything to do with him being alive? That I don't know. But is Donald Trump Junior called to fulfill what JFK Junior was supposed to, but never got to? Wow, that I don't know. Now, here's the interesting part. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Liz Croak and texting with her here earlier, and she brought up a good point. Could it be a junior, junior ticket if they do find out that junior's alive? Wow. I don't, I'm not saying he is alive. I don't know. God's not shown me anything on it. But it would certainly be interesting uh, if something like that did transpire. But now I do think keep your eyes on junior for a reason. Now, does he become another president? I don't know. Uh, I, again, God has not gone that far and shown me exactly who it is, but there's something to do with the emphasis on junior. So keep your eyes on that. Wow. Uh, I I think there needs I, I think we need to to institute uh, maybe I don't know IQ check is an IQ checks maybe for getting on the internet like <laughs> being able to post things on the internet like what what's the problem here with Coach Dave There's something There's something completely wrong with the way that he comprehends the world. <laughs> well, you say that I would say he's more advanced than you. <laughs> He goes deeper. He doesn't oh, yeah. just hear uh, junior, the word junior after Donald Trump Jr. in a dream right. and think this was just about Donald Trump Jr. Right. He goes that next step and says this is about a very dead man that yeah. the conspiracy theorists are. I had no idea. This is what alerted me to the fact I, that there is I a con- JFK yeah. Jr. conspiracy theory. And somehow these guys like him. Well, they because they think that JFK Jr. The, the the whole conspiracy theory around him is that he's lying low at the moment because he's going to come, when he comes back he's almost like a messianic sort of figure, right? Yeah. When, when he returns, he's going to uh, do away with the Illuminati yeah. and like take care of all of this like these vast international conspiracies that have been controlling the weather it's amazing and uh yeah these these cabals of 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 child sex yeah, traffickers sex and trafficking uh controlling the, the, the monetary pedof- the pedophile rings system. they love to call them the, yeah oh know, my god the, the, the people who who are the the puppet masters you it's know? so amazing yeah. it's like I, yeah, every time you, you learn a new thing that they're talking about, yeah. and there's a whole QAnon deal there. <laughs> Who Man. the fuck knows? It, they it's, are cuckoo bananas. Yeah, it's just I, it's just crazy town. I mean, which I kind of enjoy. I enjoy that level it hurts. of nuts. It's it's Man. yeah. It's this not. one actually hurt. <laughs> this this one uh, I, I just felt because just at the thought of a, a Don Junior presidency. Well, that that was like this, <laughs> oh, you know, kind of gut sort of oh, thing. Right. Uh, and then it moves on to like, well, in JFK, you know, because he might, JFK Jr. Right. Because he, he might still be alive. I'm not saying that he is. God hasn't shown me that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that just like, it, it caused such a head cock <laughs> that like, I, I pulled something. You got, you you know? got whiplash. Yeah. It was just like, uh, what? <laughs> Pain, Dan. Amazing. Pain. Oh, JFK Jr. I, I'm blown away. Like, that he's a good guy in their thoughts, that he could even be possibly cast as that, How? is amazing to me. I, whoever's inventing these ideas is... The real uh, puppet master. Is a genius, <laughs> is, is a lunatic genius. I don't, yeah. I don't know who it is. <sighs> anyway, there you go. I know, it's so crazy. Uh, we did have some folks write into us, uh, and I think I, I shall read them now. Um, uh, Eli wrote in in relation to uh, 
something that we talked about recently uh, on a show, which was um, marriage in Israel. And remember, I did a story mm. about a, a Russian fella yeah. who couldn't prove his Jewish prominent right. pro- provenance uh-huh. well enough to the to the the puppet masters who hold the keys to marriage in that right. company or right. country rather. Right. Uh, Eli writes, I have a few corrections regarding uh, your Uh-oh. section in 381, episode 381, wrong. about proving you're, you're Jew enough to in order to marry, since I think you missed the actual tragedy of the situation. Oh. Israel is a very secular country with a complex relationship with Jewish orthodoxy. Uh, I agree that that's the case, except that that, except that, the, that complex relationship does kind of neg- negate... How secular they are. <laughs> All right, Dan. Anyway, uh, you are right in saying Israel does not provide civil marriages, but, but it does recognize them. If you are a secular, reform, conservative, etc., and don't want to deal with the orthodox religious establishment, and you want your marriage to be recognized, then you can go to one of the many countries that provide civil marriages to non-nationals. Oh, Jesus. The cheapest and closest option is Cyprus. I should note that there are very, very few consequences to just not officially getting married, i.e. your kids, uh, you and your kids are not penalized in any way, and divorce is the same, as far as I know. Oh, and as far as I know, you'll, not be, you'll just not be entitled to, to some small tax discounts, which affect many childless couples. Uh, yeah. It's also sh- socially acceptable. Now, I have an issue here. Uh- for pe- it's not easy for everybody to just leave the country when they need to get married. There's that. There's like, okay, they might be small but tax benefits, but they're still tax benefits. Right. You're missing out on tax benefits that these other people just get. Right. Just because they happened to be Jewish enough to get married. Right. And willing to go through the Orthodox right. process. Yeah, these whatever. Orthodox guys hold all of these keys. Sounds like they... they yeah. Yeah, because... So even though it might, you know, you'll, you you miss out, you know, there are probably some poor people there and probably they, they could use that tax benefit and probably they could use the ability to get married without leaving the damned country. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, but this is an interesting point that, that Eli makes. Okay. Uh, the ever increasing hurdles the Orthodox establishment places do not affect the majority of secular, uh, citizens who is affected observant orthodox jews if you are an actual believer then your only option is to marry according to the religion the real tragedy is orthodox jews are preventing other orthodox jews from marrying because they cannot prove their lineage and that is interesting huh like but i think but you know i think that the guy that we were talking about on that on on you know in that story is an orthodox jew he just happens to be from russia and there were no there, you know, the document line, the line of documentation ended when the Russians, uh, right. when 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 the communists took over in, right. the, in the USSR. So, yeah, it's a little rough. But thanks for that, uh, for elucidating that story a little bit more, Eli. Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, dear Frank and Dan. This is from Claire. I was just at the metro station here in Buffalo waiting for a bus. A couple of Mormon missionaries came up to me and asked, "Do you want a picture of Jesus?" What? What? No Book of Mormon. I said I was an atheist, and one of them replied. One of them chirped up, "Oh, we love atheists." I replied that I very much doubted it, and as they moved away, I said, "What? You're not going to try and stop? Try? You're not going to stop and try to convince me your Jesus guy actually existed? You'd have seven minutes before my bus gets here." Nope, they said, and uh, they said they had a subway to catch. The missionaries of the 1970s and 80s who came yearly to do hours-long spiritual battle with my Catholic mother would have eaten those pale noodles for lunch and spit them out as too insipid. Where are their guts? Where is their zeal? Where's the fire in their eyes? I'm very disappointed, says Claire. Yeah, that's gone. Well, well, okay, some of them are zealous, but the other thing is that they know a lost cause when they smell it. (laughs) I'm guessing that they saw you (laughs) and were like, hmm. There's nothing to gain here. <laughs> oh, poor Claire. I'm just saying, Claire sounds like the kind of person who is... Well, she's yelling after them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, good, good for you, Claire. I, I, I fine, applaud yeah. uh, your, your technique. And uh, 
But yeah, it doesn't take long for a Mormon missionary to learn who they're definitely 100% not going to get a conversion out right, of. Right, right. And do you want a picture of Jesus? Gross. That is a... What a... gross. What a odd first line. I yeah. mean, they... You know what? I, they have to try new approaches all the time. Yeah. Because... Because the world catches on to, do you want a Book of Mormon or whatever? Right. Have you heard the good word? Anything? Anyway. Ours was, do you want to take a survey? Oh, right. You guys had that we trick. Did, we did surveys. Which? Hey, would you like to take a survey? Which, did you ever collect the data from these surveys? <laughs> well, there were like two questions. One was like, do you believe in God? And uh, <laughs> do you like want to go be with your family forever or something like right. that. Like they were just, I can't remember what the but questions it, were. But what I I'm, honestly what can't. I'm pointing out is that it's a bullshit thing. Oh, no, there was, was no survey. It was all meant to just to start a, a conversation. Start, start a conversation. Yeah, yeah. We didn't, we didn't collect the data. We no. didn't have to send it into the mission home. Right. Uh, <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah. So dumb. Uh, Dylan wrote into us. Hey guys, been listening for a while now, uh, working on projects and really enjoy the show. Uh, in the in the most recent podcast, God and Gender, you guys are talking about a college kid that came out as non-binary and is now going by they, them. You mentioned that they is plural and sounds weird. However, I'd argue that you already use it singularly. Uh, I believe it was Jimmy from Mr. Atheist that used this example. Uh, morning after a party. Hey, someone forgot their hat. Who is it? I don't know. I'm sure they will come to pick it up. So yes, uh, yeah, we are doing that. A hundred percent. He or she. We're we've been saying they for a while, right? Yeah, that's exactly. True. Uh, uh, that you, yeah. Somebody I mean, it, it's it's something that we've done. Yes, and it, but it's in that context. You're not referring to a specific person. It is a. Uh, it's it, it's an ambiguous singular, and I get that. It's fine, and and again, they them. I will use it. It's oh, yeah. just it's just a little confusing when you're referring to someone specific because it is plural. I, did we get into that? I thought, a little bit. A little I bit. Thought we, that it was more just sort of the getting used to it. Yeah, I think we just, was, we just need to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, okay. But yes, thanks for writing in. It wasn't frustration, though. We weren't expressing. Well, I w- I'm a little frustrated because oh, it are. sounds weird. It sounds, oh, we said that the language hasn't caught up or something. Well, like and we also like. said that they, them is awkward because it already has a meaning that is plural. Right. Yeah. And enough. it still does. You know, so that's just something we have to work around. And yes, we can figure it out from context most of the time. Right. What we're referring to. So it's not that big a deal. Right. Uh, One more. David Freighton. uh, Hello, Frank and Dan. I love the show. Have after hearing about the Utah teacher who was unfamiliar, unfamiliar with Lent and Ash Wednesday. (laughs) I was wondering if Utah has any Friday Lent events. I live in Pittsburgh. And we have a large 25% Catholic population, so fish fries are very common, either at churches, Catholic or otherwise, fire departments, or organizations like the Elks Lodge. People lined up to get traditional Lenten food that they don't eat any other time of the year. Some, some popular items are fried fish sandwiches, and I think Pittsburgh regional specialties like haluski, which uh, uh, David very conveniently provided a link for what haluski is, it what is, is noodles and cabbage. <laughs> I don't know, it sounded fine. It doesn't sound good, but it sounded fine. Anyway, uh, and and pierogies apparently. Oh, pierogies! I love pierogies. Yeah, uh, as they would say around here, he's David says, Yin's going to the fish fry to get some fish sandwiches, haluski, and pierogies, and that. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. In that. Uh, I, I didn't attempt the dialect. I just right. read the words as... Well as, done. Yes. Uh, and, and to answer his question, do we have Linton activities? No. <laughs> I literally went to the Salt Lake Diocese uh, <laughs> website yeah. and went onto their calendar, uh-huh. and it was like, Lent. Yeah. That was like that was the event. There's, I think... Oh, they're having a retreat. They're having a Lenten retreat. Oh, nice. But no. Okay. No. Zero events. No. I, I've never... I did not know that that was we, a thing. We do not have a pre-Lenten event. We don't have any sort of uh, I, uh, Mardi Gras n- or no anything clue. sort of like that. I've heard of Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> we got nothing <laughs> here, people. Yeah, Mar- yeah, yeah. Mormons don't do that. No. So... No. Huh. So we don't have it. Yeah, you'd think that they would, that the Catholic Church would like try to extra Catholic and like get something going. 
Yeah, I don't know. They're not even trying. They're not. We have like we have a decent. Like, it's like two hundred thousand Catholics in the valley. Are there? Yeah. Yeah. It's a decent. It's a. De- I mean, yeah. It, 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 hell, just just in our Latino community, we we. Well, yeah, we've got plenty of Catholics. I don't know. I you, mean, you'd think the they'd do something, is, but they'd... maybe the Latino community is doing something, right? And because we're not part of that community, we're we, we just don't. We're just not. Well, aware it's of it. not on the diocese website. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Che- I didn't check out the local Fair Elks enough. or whatever. Anyway, Fair enough. There you go. Uh, thank you all for writing in. Yeah. Uh, do we have anyone to thank? We do have uh, some people to thank. Okay. Uh, we have one new venerable listener, okay. Kellum. 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 Thank you, Kellum. You're amazing. Um, and then we have um, our pantheon of lords and saviors. Yes. Uh, Jash, Scott, Melissa, D, Hannah, Liz, and Judy. Uh, they all are tied for first place. As amazing. far as like, the, 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 who gives the most per episode. We are it's so lorded and saved. Absolutely amazing. Um and, uh, yeah, all of these kind folk, at one point in their lives, went to thankgodimatheist.com and clicked on the support tab, uh, which uh, will provide them with a link to either uh, PayPal, which is one route. These folks all went to Patreon right. and signed up to be a patron and be part of our, our online campaign right. uh, to help pay for the show. Yep. And we really appreciate it. We can't do the show without your support. Um, and since it is uh, currently pledge week on our local public radio station, and I feel everyone's pain, I'm going to shut up at this point. Okay. Well, we <laughs> yes, we we but love you like all. Thank you so much. Please do. Yeah. Dan. Yes, sir. Um, I think it's very brave of you, Dan, to volunteer to go straight into the lion's den this weekend. Yeah. Uh, as a lot of you are listening to this, it is currently a uh, Mormon general conference. Yeah, it might be for, yeah, for many of you. It's a biannual event. Glorious event. Mm-hmm. Just I'm, and amazing. I'm, and I'm diving into the lion's mouth. I am going in. I am. Uh, I am surrounding. I will be surrounded by floral dresses and bad shoes, <sighs> as far as the eye oh, can see. Brave soul, Dan. Brave soul. Now there is a new breed of Mormons. They, mm. they, the, 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 the Mormsters, the Mormon hipsters, the Mipsters. They are. There are a few of them out there that are like you know in in better cut suits, <laughs> and uh, and. Slightly better, slightly better clothing. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's going to be bad, and I'm going to be live tweeting, live now, tweets. Now there's yeah. some there's some rumor mill stuff. Now lately, the rumor mill about changes. We've talked about changes that don't sound that earth shaking <laughs> to an outside ear, right? Uh, that have happened since the new president has taken over right. uh, at the church, but. To a Mormon sensibility, the earth is shook. Oh yeah, and they are they are reeling. And lately, the the rumor mill has been pretty spot on. Yeah, like there have been leaks. Yeah, uh, it's been like a sieve over there. Nobody's surprised except those who aren't. You know, if you're paying attention, you're not surprised, right. except by the fact that it happened. Right. Uh, and the rumor mill has been churning about. Changes to what the Mormons call the word of wisdom or the wow. The wow. I never heard it called the wow. Well, you see it now abbreviated as W-O-W. the wow yeah. on online. That's something that the online has brought mm-hmm. us. Um, but yeah, the word of wisdom. Which is, which is the, the, the set of rules about the surrounding what Mormons eat, drink, don't smoke. It's more about what they don't eat, don't drink, and right. don't smoke, and don't do. Really, they're okay with pretty much eating whatever. <laughs> oh, and if you've seen Mormons at a at a buffet, you know they're okay with eating whatever. 
in whatever quantity yeah. as well. Um, no, the, a tradition um, that I carry forward in my life. Oh um, yeah, I mean know. I'll hit a chuckarama. <laughs> you, you can't stop me, Dan. Um, <laughs> we actually have a restaurant here called Chuckarama. Yeah, just so you know, that's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, but the things that you can't do: smoke. Yeah. Uh, general understanding: you don't do drugs. Drinking um, alcohol. Drinking alcohol. Tea and coffee. Tea and coffee. So alcohol, the, tea, and coffee list, right? are like the big deal, big ticket items. Yeah. The Mormons don't do. Uh, and they're, this, is, this is important. This is what makes them peculiar. Yes. They they identify the Mormons. Actually, if that was the only thing that made them peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Mormons have been outcasts and have sort of built their identity around being yeah. outcasts. Yeah. Uh, it started with polygamy, uh-huh. and uh, and you know the Mormons were like, "Aha, we're never giving that up." And then it went away, right? Uh, and then, and then it was like, these are the things that they held on to, that they pointed to as we are separate from the 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 evil world out there. We're in the world, but we are not of the world, right? So that you know, that not drinking alcohol, that not drinking coffee or tea, these were the big deal. Big yeah. ticket items. Yeah. Now, the book of or the the word of wisdom as it appears in their scripture, uh-huh. which is not the canonized law, but it, as it appears in their scripture, it says no hot drinks. Right, right. But let me tell you something: you try and keep a Mormon from a from hot chocolate. Right, you're not going to be able to do it. Oh, they love the shit. They they will murder you. And they've found their, their caffeine. Hot. It's just in cold form. Yeah. Uh, coming out of uh, spouts at the the gas station, right? Indeed, or or, or at the myriad uh, soda shops, oh, those fucking soda places that are all over the Utah. Oh now. my god! Just, You're getting your 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 dirty Coke, right? Isn't that right. What they call yes. It? Yes. Your dirty sodas. Yeah. <sighs> Which is just like, hey, let's add more sugar to this. Uh-huh. What this needs is more sugar. Yeah. And more f- and flavors abound. Right. Anywho, uh, they're gross. Uh, I can't. I don't know how. I mean, I, Utah must have well, diabetes spikes like the, you wouldn't believe. The best thing that they could do for the Mormon general Mormon health would be to allow them to drink coffee and tea. Which that's what the rumor is saying. The They're rumor. saying, well, I, okay, so maybe what, not that. The, is the most motivation, the most but, reliable thing that I've heard mm-hmm. uh, is that tea. Is probably happening, and and the reasoning behind it is that they are they are trying to get converts in a whole bunch of countries where tea is v- essential to their to to sort of their uh, culture. So m- I mean, how more essential can tea be for for somebody than say for like the British, right? Yeah, I mean that's a ama- like that's yeah, you super think. cultural, and they didn't bend. On 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 yeah, you know, the UK but times they are a change. The, chi- the times they are a change, and when you think about South America and their mate, mm. and you think about Asia and their teas, mm. look, oolong. They're they're done. They're, they're it's over for them in Europe, in the, in the European countries, yeah. in in the sort of the the first world. It's over for the Mormons. They've yeah. lost. Yeah. So they got to go second, third world. Yeah. Is there a second world? Te- a- technically, in the the way that the whole thing was set up, yes, there was. But I won't tell you who the second world is <laughs> because it's insulting to all those wonderful countries. Canada. It's basically all of Europe. Really? The second world. Second yeah. world. Uh huh. So the idea was that you the the first world was even the superpower. Western Europe is a superpower. Oh, was okay. The first world, and then you had your second tier countries, which were the second <laughs> world. Uh, who, who, like. Yeah, it it, it it it's a bad rating ranking system yeah. to begin with, but now it's turned into first world and third world, which is also largely rejected. Dan, right? Yeah. People talk about developing. It's fine, fine. Developing in the countries. developed world. The, anyway, <laughs> fine. We're getting off track here. The point is, I think tea might be coming down the pike. I'm not sure about coffee, but the rumor mill online has has totally glommed on to uh coffee as well yeah. yeah they uh they're convinced that it's both now i read somebody's comment that and i don't know who they are but i thought that it was a, it was 
it was interesting in that they anyway their take was they're not going to take this out of the word of wisdom but maybe they uh no longer make it a requirement for going to the temple right right yeah so so, so it it, might, it's a very nuanced sort of thing there that that they would be doing but that would be the first step right what they would say so so what you're saying is what it would mean is we're still against this. It's uh-huh. still wrong to do this. Right. It's still a commandment. But it won't be a disqualifying offense. Right. Uh, you won't... Because as long as we're still getting your money... <laughs> right? Yeah. You no, can, literally. You can, you, can, you can drink what you want. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Uh, well, not everything you want. Because I don't think alcohol is on I, the table. Alcohol is definitely not on the table. They're still going to say that that's no good. And I need the way- them to come around on <laughs> beer and wine. Just beer and wine. Be, no. be weird about liquor. Well, you know oh, what? Right, that right. would be in line with the original intent of the Word of Wisdom. Absolutely. They talk about hard drinks, Absolutely. not beer and wine. And beer and wine don't qualify as hard drink. There, there is not another sect of Mormonism, right? Yeah. Other than the downtown church that... Uh, that, that uh, that, under, that, that observes the word of wisdom the way that they do. Right. They they all drink beer and wine. Yeah. That's my understanding. Maybe there's some fundamentalist groups that have splintered off the from dump. this one. Right. Specifically. But like the fundamentalists, my understanding is they drink beer and wine, yeah. don't they? I don't know. I know that maybe not the fundamentalists, but a lot of just the independent polygamists around the valley. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And it's like, oh. If it's good enough for Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he drank wine. That dude. They was don't all... do it in excess. It was. That's it. They they have. I'll tell you what. That whole line. Wine was right? so important to him. He was like, "Hey, somebody was like, hey, here's some water,'" and he was like, "No, nah, fuck that. Let's make it wine." <laughs> That's how important <laughs> wine was to Jesus Christ Himself. I know, and believe me, wine is amazing, delicious, and 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 good for you. And it, which is why I drink. Gallons. Of you it. do. You're you are a wine man. <laughs> you're a wine o. I am not a wine o. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you'll find you'll find more. You'll hear more uh, if you go to our Twitter feed because mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to be doing that live tweeting. Yeah. From the thing, uh, we'll we'll post about it on the Twitter and on the Facebook so that people know ahead of time in case they don't hear this in time. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, there you go. You, you will see. Again, it's so funny to me. If they allow the drinking of tea, uh-huh. especially if they allow the drinking of coffee, right? Mormon minds will blow up. <laughs> if you hear over the weekend a gi- a very loud Krakatoa esque explosion, <laughs> wherever you are in the world, uh-huh. it may have been Mormon minds breaking. Oh, all over the universe. If they get coffee, Dan, oh my God, they're going to be insufferable. <laughs> they're they're going to ruin our coffee. They're going to ruin coffee shops. Well, you know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, yeah. and we said, and we both realized, oh shit, we need to start making coffee shops aimed at Mormons, yeah, so that they have their own coffee shops to go to, yeah, so that we have ours and they have theirs, yeah. Just so, how yeah. Do you, how do you turn? Uh, uh, a craft store. Every you need to put one in every craft store. You need to, well. What you need to do is you need to just you market it right. So it's, what do you call it? Moroni mocha. <laughs> I like no. it. I like it. Well, they'll be. Oh yeah, they'll. Or you know, you've got all these soda shops. You just got to market it that way. Yeah. You here's what you do. They'll do. Oh, they'll do something gross. They'll do like a shot of espresso in a coke or something. Well, a shot of espresso in a in a chai. You got dirty chai. No, I know. But, but yeah, just, they'll probably do that. They'll probably do something really disgusting. They, I'm going to start doing... There's a fortune to be made is what I'm trying... Is what I'm getting at. But they're going to hit Starbucks so hard. Oh, yeah. Just uh, stay away from Starbucks in, oh. in Utah if this happens. <laughs> just realize... Within minutes. Of yeah. the, I mean, the conference center will probably just clear out <laughs> just, as soon as they announce it. Everybody will everybody will be coffee. on their Yelp. Where is I, coffee? Yeah, I need to go try this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. There you go. Um, well, it, 
you'll hear more. We'll we'll let you know. Absolutely. Um, if you want to, if you have anything you want to say about the subject, feel free to write into us. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, what would be the weird thing that would happen that would that, none of, that would seem like a big deal in your former religious tradition, uh, but we wouldn't, the, the rest of us wouldn't know? Write into us. Let us know. Sure. Um, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click that like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA members only lounge or request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. The Twitter Twitter handle yeah. is TGI Atheist. The group, uh, sub, the subreddit, whatever, is also TGI Atheist. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks so much, uh, speaking of Facebook, to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on the Facebook page. Thanks to Danny and Amy for what I assume they're still doing, which is moderating the Members Only Lounge. I haven't uh, had a meeting with them for a bit. A minute, I'm going to have to check in with them. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> uh, and then a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their music, and also to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And big thanks to you for listening. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.